welcome to the Monday, May 6th Development and Review Board uh, meeting for the City of Montpelier. Uh, Meredith will go over remote attendee um, procedures. Okay, so I am going to share my screen. Um, Catherine, do you think you could go up to the laptop up there and just minimize the Zoom screen so it doesn't hide this? Thank you. Just a little, nope, on the top of the way the people are there. The, the, on that bar, go on the left and that one. Yeah, awesome. Perfect. Okay. So. So for anyone viewing tonight's meeting via the Orca Media live stream, you can participate in tonight's Development Review Board meeting via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want to have the full video experience, then please type this link into your web browser and I will get a notification that you want to join the Zoom meeting. Alternatively, you can dial in on your phone, any phone, using um, this phone number. And then when prompted, put in this meeting ID. Um, and again, I'll get a little prompt that you want to be led into the meeting. If anyone is has, having problems accessing the meeting using these options, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email as best I can throughout the meeting. Um, for everyone attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, for everyone who is attending, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand. Um, you can do that using, you know, if you have your video on, then raise your physical hand and we'll see you. And um, Or you can use the raise hand button on your toolbar. If someone calls in over the phone, you can use star, uh, star nine, and that'll put a little raise hand um, on your screen for us to see. Um, once you've raised your hand to ask questions during the appropriate times, you know, we don't necessarily ask questions when we're approving the agenda. Um, the chair will call on you um, and recognize you. And then you'll, I'll let you ask you to unmute yourself using the Zoom. Um, and then you'll be able to talk, um, especially if, if you're a member of the public. Um, please make sure to state your full name and address for the record the first time you talk. Um, that way we know who has actually commented on an application or some other meeting item on the agenda. Um, and note that um, the you know once you're done with your comments, you'll get remuted. And if you have other things you want to say, you're going to need to raise your hand and get recognized by the chair again. Um, please remember that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. So say you your raise hand, you know you can't find your raise hand button um, or something along those lines. Um, if you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda. You do need to raise your hand. Um, we need to take testimony, um, you know, orally. We can't can't take testimony through the chat function. Um, okay, so in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, and I would find that out through my email, um, the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you. Um, the first item here is approval of the agenda. Everybody had an opportunity to look at it. I move we approve the agenda. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Three. All right, we got through that. Um, so just a, a comment to sort of start this meeting off. Um, it's really important to this whole process that we have a kind of decorous, smooth way of hearing the public and board members and everybody who's concerned um, and that we don't talk over each other. That's that's why the procedures are set up the way they are, so that somebody needs to be recognized before they speak, so that we don't have a lot of crosstalk. It also gets very confusing if multiple people are talking at once. Um, so I think that we just need to maybe focus a little bit more attention on having that go smoothly this evening. Um, and uh, I'm really glad the applicant is back. And I think... Uh, unless anybody else has something they want to add to that, I would say that we are ready to get rolling. Um, because this is a continuation, um, do I need to, is we're, are in, 
You don't get to swear in people who were already sworn in. Okay. Um, but just... we have some new people on remotely. We have an Allie Tarwater, a Sierra Norford, and a Molly Clark who weren't in attendance at the last meeting. So um, if they have any intention of speaking. speaking in any way, shape, or form or think that they might, then they should be sworn in. Okay. Um, can I hear from any of those folks, please? Molly Clark, Sierra Norford, Allie Tarwater. Yeah, so I'll do a little ask to unmute. You can unmute yourself and, and speak up if you want, or you can, if you know you want to talk, you can just sort of give a thumbs up. Um, we might ask you to turn your video on for the swearing in um, if you're going to be sworn in. Uh, thumbs up from Molly. Okay. okay, she might talk. Okay, great. Well, thumbs up from Sierra. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Allie, I don't know if you want to talk or not. You're unmuted, so um, at least you should be. All right. Okay. At least two of them want to be sworn in. Okay. So everybody who is interested, this is the opportunity now to turn on your video, to raise your right hand, and uh, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalty of perjury? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I think that, uh, there have been a few changes to the application and I think Kiana, it would be great if you could just talk through what has changed. Absolutely. Um, so you only need the additions. You don't need me to review the, what I went over last time I was in the meeting. I don't think so. I think that we're, okay. we're up to speed on that. Thank you. Great. I was just going to read the same spiel again. So if you don't want to hear it, I'm good. Okay. It was a really good spiel. I remember. Thank you. I had to type it out. So, you know. All right. So I do have um, in the application, there are two major additions, one being a, a signed document by the HOA um, that Katie Gustafson from the Vermont College of Fine Arts um, orchestrated with the current homeowners association of the parking lots that are associated with this property that will come um, as membership of joining the HOA when we do buy the property, that they essentially uh, signed off on this project or this permit as well, which was an important piece. And then there's one other document that just says addition to conditional use permit for Gary Library. And there's kind of three components of that, um, or actually two in addition addition to the signed letter from the HOA. The first one is that we have um, worked with um, some concerned neighbors and have come up with um, a kind of a lovely compromise of that all patron-based events and activities provided, you know, herein within the uh, Gary Library shall end no later than 11 p.m. except, and we've got a couple exceptions, except for four Saturday nights a year when the end time may be 12, you know, midnight, and then New Year's Eve when that end time may be 1 a.m. Um, so we've essentially agreed upon a pretty consistent uh, stopping point for patron events, meaning the events will end by 11 p.m. Um, that was the first kind of condition that we're adding in here to, for this piece. And then the second one doesn't necessarily, um, the second one is really just a list of ways in which the HOA and the Gary and the hub will address um, parking lot behavior from our patrons and kind of have a proactive approach to making sure that we are putting our community first and our neighbors first and training our audiences to recognize our position in the community and recognize how important it is that we are good neighbors and that they're a part of that process. So um, some of the things that we are working into our plans is one that we're gonna, we, as a, as the HOA and as the, uh, the hub specifically, we're gonna post signage in our parking lot areas that essentially state the quiet hours that uh, you know align to the noise ordinance so that it's very clear what um, those hours are. And also just reminding people that we are in a neighborhood and just have that very visual cue in our parking lots um, to remind them in addition to verbiage within our printed programs and at the beginning of events where we remind our audiences that we are a member of the community and we live amongst houses. And so therefore, as they exit and enter to their cars to just be really respectful of that and to remember that we have a noise ordinance here in Montpelier um, and what that is. So 
those kind of two components are really just a proactive approach to us being a part of the community and just recognizing that we do have neighbors to those parking lots that we share. Um, and hopefully that will go a long way um, and train everyone to, I think it'll be great. And then the last piece is just the signed letter. So those, those three components are pieces that we worked with, um, um, worked on to include, to make sure that we address some of the concerns from our neighbors. And I think those, those should cover it. Great. Um, thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, Meredith, did you, you had your hand up there? No. 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 I don't know. That's not, I don't think I have a hand up. <laughs> okay. It looks like, it looks like it up there. If you look on the screen. No. This is just the mouse. I think okay. it's just the mouse. <laughs> All right. Yeah, like, Meredith, really got to get in here. I, now, if I have the hand on there, it'll be a yellow. Okay. <laughs> sorry. It was my mouse. I was like, what is that hand? No, sorry. Um. Okay. Uh, so to, um, one of the things that I wanted to, uh, have us all look at is just how far we got in the staff report last time. I feel like we got most of the way through it, um, that, that most issues had been addressed, uh, and do other people feel like we, we didn't touch on the basis of some things or, I mean, I'm. I know that we got through the traffic study. We decided that they didn't need a traffic study. Um, you know that basically anything else that they do outdoors is going to go through another permitting process, so that we don't need to worry about. Um, you know, if they add lights to the outside patio, that's going to be that's also um, either be permitted or come in front of us for a variance. So things that they're talking about changing on the outside would um, would come before us again if they're not directly permitted. So it's not like we don't have another chance to look at those things. Um, uh, and, and the other thing I, I think that is good that you included, uh, Deanna, is the, um, the Montpelier no reference to the Montpelier noise ordinances, because that's really the one of the best tools for neighbors to address issues. I mean, that's really what it's set up to do. Um, so obviously working out things proactively is the best possible scenario, but there are ordinances to um, to deal with noise. So that is also a tool that people have in their toolbox. Um, Meredith, did you have any other, did, did you feel like we left something out? I feel like no. we did a pretty thorough examination last time. Yeah, I think, you know, unless there were questions or comments from the public or other board members, um, you know, if everybody's happy with what Kiana has added in, I think that, you know, once 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 the new members of the public have had their chance to say anything, yeah. the biggest thing is just to finalize what the potential conditions will be, because we discussed some things last time, and then we have these new things to the right. board hashing out which things are actually one question. specific conditions of approval will need to be determined. And the technical question that I had is that by altering, by adding these to her application, we don't need to include them as conditions. You can, or you you don't have to. It's whether and how how strongly the board feels they need to be specific conditions of the board's approval versus these are just things that the applicant has attested they're going to do. So if they fail to do them, it's a violation of the permit. Okay. Right. So some some things like so if somebody says that their wall is only going to be four and a half feet high, but they actually build it five feet high. That's that's, you know, a breach of the material fact. So it's a violation. So I can enforce on that. Okay. These are the same kind. Can't yeah, I mean, the same these, these of are officially added to yes, the application. These are officially so added included. to the application. That's what I wanted as to know. Representations of what will happen. Okay. Um, board members, questions? Good question. You know, whether they're Adam's conditions or just we have them in the application. I, you know, I kind of see these as uh, really great things that uh, make a application that absolutely goes above and beyond. Uh, you know what is um, you know required for this type of conditional use uh, when you compare from like what's currently there to like what is being proposed. And so I'm inclined to just view them as components of a really great application rather than any findings that the board has made that these are absolute requirements based on our interpretation of the Montpelier regs. I'm also in agreement with that, I think. 
Um, do are there other comments from the board members before I open it up to the public? Okay. Uh, is there anybody who'd like to say anything uh, who is on the Zoom end of things? If somebody in Zoom wants to say something, um, raise your hand either by turning on your video and doing it physically or using your little raise hand button under your reactions on your uh, toolbar. Oh, yeah, Jean? Jean has something to say. Oops, board member. Sorry. Yep. Hi, hi Jean. Uh, hi, guys. No, I just couldn't agree more with, uh, with Rob's statement there uh, thanks for putting that out there I, I i totally agree and uh and i think the board and, and the previous meeting and and everyone's uh and where we're at now seems like it's it's all in a positive place to to move forward thank you thanks gene thanks gene so molly or sierra or ali any of you want to say anything you'll need to raise your hand so that then i'll know who to ask to unmute Okay. I see no hands. Oh, 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 wait, Allie does. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, hold on. Uh, there you go. So, Allie, so did you, we didn't see you with the swearing in. Do we want to just swear you in to make sure? Sure. Yes, oh, sorry. I mean, my audio wasn't working and I refreshed the page right as you were doing it. So, oh, yes. Okay, so, yeah, so we need to, we need <laughs> okay. to swear Allie in. Okay. Uh, will you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell uh, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains, penalties of perjury? I swear. Great. Thank you. You want well, to make a comment? Sure. Uh, so I am a Montpelier resident. I live at 176 Main Street, uh, corner north of Maine. I am also a music teacher in the community. And I just wanted to say that I am super excited about this project. I think it's going to give our uh, community members, uh, our performing musician as well, uh, give us lots of like a great new place to perform that is like specific to performance as opposed to a bar or something like that, where we can have a more... Um, like I don't want to say legit but a more almost like a more legitimate performance space um and giving our students the opportunity to perform in a <clears throat> excuse me in a place that <clears throat> so sorry in a place that's not our school theater um I I can't take my students out to a bar to perform but I would love to take them to a great new theater in town to to play so thank you so much thank you very much um so Looking through what we had added for the previous meeting for possible conditions. Um, I think there was the one about having a updated site plan with the garbage disposal area. I think that was the only one as a possible like pre-permit condition yeah. that I remember after going through my notes. Who is it? Uh, there were two numbers for either square footage or number of seats on the deck oh. that needed to be reconciled. Yeah. yeah, I think, and that may have been a, because she wasn't using it for the evening when there were events, it was just going to be a um, daytime use space. Um. I think the we as yeah, for my concerns, like I can all just say that the deck, um, when we get to permitting that, is an outdoor area for the cafe, and it's not for the performance aspects of the. But isn't business. The um, for the that's more for like the performances, right? And the, the chairs would be scooted over for, but for when the classes are happening, a lot of that entrance might be below, but then like the yeah. parents might be like, Oh, I can actually like sit and chill <laughs> is the way I viewed it. I don't know if Kiana had, that was my memory. So I don't, I don't feel so much like that's as much of a concern about how much space can be used for that outside service area. But I don't know if Kiana has something you, to add. Well, I guess the, the other thing that we did oh, talk, hold on. Yeah, Sharon's talking. Hold on, Kiana. Uh, um, the other thing that we did talk about is that um, that that when that outdoor new additional outdoor space is built, it's also going to have another permitting process, right? For lights and anything else that might go onto that, right? And that it's... the intent of that patio was to um, 
have a place where people could kind of build up to go to, to line up to go into a performance, but that's the only use that it would be at night and that the rest of the time it was sung. So it's just a matter of, you're, you were saying that the 720 feet. It, there was just some confusion about square okay. feet. And I couldn't quite remember the conversation about use. I'm fine with not saying anything about use. I'm yeah. sure that the use patterns will define the use. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and there's really no reason for us to anticipate or speculate or police. Yeah. Okay. No, and I think that is something I raised in the staff report about does the board feel like they have to specify how much of that is used for the conditional use? And it, it sounded like by the end of the conversation that there that's where things had worked out in my mind. Okay. Um, Kenna, did you want to comment? Or are you? I'm not sure what I'm commenting. Like, exactly okay, I don't think you have to. For me, but um, in terms of numbers, exactly what number we're talking about. But if you need me to, I can talk about it. But if you're you're all good, I'm good too. I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with it. I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, I could see, I guess, um, the additional, uh, the original condition that was on there being included as part of the motion that they'll include a new site plan with uh, the site of the disposal on there. Um, I don't really see, I don't, I don't really feel like we need to add anything else. To that, my opinion. I'm certainly welcome to other opinions. Okay, somebody got a motion. Well, I had one question. It may be yeah. uh, just for reflecting back on everything from yeah. last time. Last time we were so focused on um, the car activity in the parking lot, we never talked about any other types of transportation. <laughs> I was just curious if there's any clarification around, um, I don't think I saw anything about whether there's existing bike racks or whether that might be more of a condo association question. Yeah, so um, for the site as a whole, um, I have been in talks with various people involved in the condo association. And I think there has been, my sense is that there has been a, a let's wait to figure out how things might flow better and how we might provide better facilities in places like for bike racks or other things until we figured out who all is going to be here. Yeah. Um, you know, I know, you know, at one end, you've got a, a younger, you know, group of kids, you have some space that's, you know, more of the like engineering school, you have, um, you know, a PT clinic. Um, and so, you know, I've been in talks with them about doing some coordinated signage for the parcel as a whole versus just the stuff on the buildings. Um, and I think that they're going to be, they're going to be rethinking sort of how everything flows um, once they've finalized who all is going to be there. So everybody can have a seat at the table. I don't know, you know, we have a representative of the condo association in the audience if somebody has additional information, but that's, that's my understanding. Um, you know. Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, Okay, good. I was just going to say, we do have on our concept design, it's where it is a part of the concept design and the narrative, the back patio that enters to the, that goes into the educational suite to the rear parking lot as a part of that, like entrance patio is a, like an overhang and a bike rack of our own just for our educational like suite. Um, and so that's a part of our plan. And then I would imagine that the whole, you know, just as Meredith said about the whole kind of campus thinking more strategically, but we definitely have a plan for a, a specific bike rack for the back side of the building where we're expecting a number of our student body to come in. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, no conditions, though, right? No, yeah, we do. Yeah. Here, just in. That's the condition. Just that one. Next question. Well, yeah. No, that's the same <laughs> one I got. <laughs> so, no new conditions. No new conditions. No new, yeah. we said no conditions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, so, I motion to grant for conditional use and minor site plan approval to add 
restaurant, restaurant takeout, performance theater, and exhibition, convention, or conference structure uses at 35 College Street as presented in the application Z-2024-0025 and supporting and supplemental materials. And uh, also adding the following condition um, that prior to permit issuance, applicants shall, shall submit a site plan that includes the location of the new refuse area um, to the rezoning administrator. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Okay. Let's do a roll call vote. Oh. Unmute so he can vote. Okay, Dean, I just unmuted you so we can hear you when we do the vote. Right on. Okay, Catherine? Yes. Rob? Yes. Uh, Dean? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Joe? Yes. Brian? Yes. And yes, also for me. Uh, so that is everyone that is unanimous. Um, Thank you. Uh, so it will be official when the written decision comes out. That will be top of my plate um, to pull that together for a draft. Um, and then Sharon will sign it. If I get the um, updated site plan with the refuse area before the decision is ready, then I will be able to issue the zoning permit at the same time. Um, <laughs> um, here, Kiana, I will let you unmute yourself if you need to um and and we'll we'll move on that as quickly as we can great thank you all so much thank you sounds like a great project <laughs> thanks <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> thank you take care and i will talk to you soon yes thanks so the next uh on our agenda is approval of the april 15th meeting minutes uh, which I read I didn't find any problems with it I also thought that um, Tammy Fury did a great job on these minutes please pass along my compliments okay well she'll hear it she listens to every recording right <laughs> thank you uh, so a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, any other business? I don't. I, I just would say that I um, I went back to my original packet that I got um, and really read through the guidelines for development review board participation, meeting policies, procedures, all of that, just to kind of get it back into my brain about how it should work, how to keep it running smoothly. Um, and I would just encourage other people to do that too. It was, it was really helpful. It kind of gave me like, okay, this is how, this is how it has to go. Um, and that was, and that was really helpful to me. So I would encourage other people to do that. Um, our next meeting is when? Uh, the 20th, Monday, the 20th. Do we have applications? Um, well, <laughs> What you have is an appeal of one of my refusals to issue a river hazard permit. Oh, so appeals of river hazard administrative decisions come to the DRB. So you won't be looking at zoning regulations. You might want to go and do a little reading through of the river hazard regulations. Oh, that's right. um, Mike Miller will be the one dealing with the staff report for that. So okay. I will staff the other aspects, but I'm basically in a witness quasi defendant yeah. role because yeah. um, the permit decision comes to the DRB as a de novo appeal. So you guys look at the application and Mike's overview of it fresh to decide right. how you would decide the permit. Right. Um, and so the, the application packet is, on the pending applications page. Okay. Feel free to go take a look at it. Um, because you guys haven't dealt with the river hazard regulations, it's probably gonna be a little confusing. So where feel are they? Uh they're in the same place as the it should be this well, it's on it's on our page. I will I will send out maybe a link to those regs. Yeah. Um what it is is um somebody got in an application to convert some first floor spaces from 
non-residential to residential. Did you right? be talking about this? I can. I can tell you the overview. Okay. <laughs> but no, I'm not going to tell you the decision. It's but it's the application, right? Right. Was for a conversion to a residential space. Um, and we did. Mike had just issued the public hearing notice for the zoning for the changes to the river hazard regulation so that you couldn't do that anymore. So it's another one of those funky timing ones. Right. Um, but Mike will be doing that and okay. I will be, I will be attending and available if anybody has any questions, but it's really a fresh look at it. Yeah. So the, you said that, but I'll send the link to just the river hazard regulations. Yeah. It would be really good to know what the regulations are if we're looking to see if something that follows yeah. the regulations. Um, so I will I will just send everybody the link to okay. those on their own so that people can read through them and see what Great. see what they can garner. Awesome. Um oh I actually the link that's on there is to the current regulations. So it's never mind. I'll send you the right link. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh see so yeah, ya. That's it. <laughs> sorry no that's okay that's okay <laughs> get their jokes where yep. they can. All, all those all those all those archived ones we actually found somebody who had some um actually i have to ask kevin if he has any old copies of paper copies of regs see if we can get them from him because he's been on the drb for so long so long all right i would entertain a motion to adjourn Okay. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much.